For those of you who are writing academic texts, according to APA, the latest edition, the seventh edition, uh, states some information related to quotations that contain citations to other works. So I want to go over briefly what to consider whenever you're looking at a secondary source or a an indirect citation. Uh, my first comment would be to try to use those sparingly. It's always best to use primary sources, and uh, those are going to be sources that you have actual access to. If you're using articles, books, um, basically any type of source that you're using, thesis, uh, maybe a doctoral study, a doctoral thesis, Make sure that you have access to that document and that will be considered a primary source or a primary citation to be included in your own paper. But a lot of times within a primary source, an article that you're reading, it will have a citation. It's actually citing another source and maybe you want to use that particular source. That's going to be an example of a secondary source or an indirect uh, source that, that you might use. Again, try to use those sparingly. If you're going to include a, an indirect uh, citation, there are basically two types or two ways that you can go about doing that. In the first example, you will have the citation within the sentence and where you will have both the citation of the original author and then at the end of the sentence, you will have the citation of the primary source. So for an example, let's say you look, you have a book by Ellis, and in the book that was written by Ellis, it quotes Chomsky. So Chomsky would be in your own sentence, in the middle of the sentence, and then at the very end you'll quote, or you'll cite Ellis. And so in the reference list, you're only to include the primary source, in this case, Ellis. Now the second example will be where perhaps you're paraphrasing or you're quoting someone and it appears at the end of the sentence. Now, in this case, you're only required to include the primary source. All right, so this is slightly different than uh, in the prior edition of the APA publication manual. Here, we only need to include the primary source. So here I have defined again the difference between a primary source and a secondary source, but the main difference now is we're no longer required to include the text as cited in. It's no longer required. We simply include the citation as we normally would and keep paying close attention to whether or not we're including the paraphrase or the, the direct quote in the middle of the sentence where we would include both citations, or we're including the paraphrase or direct quote at the end of the sentence. In that case, we're only citing the primary source. Here I've included some examples to consider. And uh, again, if you have any questions about indirect citations, it's best to clarify with your instructor to make sure uh, what his or her policy is on how many of those sources you're allowed to use, because again, in general, it's best to use those sparingly. It's always best, again, to try to rely on primary source or primary citations for, uh, for your academic text.